Okay, now I will show you how to use Excel to do the whole winter technique uh, of forecasting trended and seasonal data. What I did here, you'll see I uh, simulated some demand in this column C right here. I'm just going to highlight it. And when you look at the graph, we can see there is a continuous trend going upwards. And we can see there is a trend that repeats every three periods. So the whole winter technique should estimate both the seasonality and the trend of this data. In order to get started, we uh, have to have some kind of an initiation procedure. Um, we need to initiate or have a guess for the level. We need to have I guess for the trend and we need to start off with some kind of uh, seasonality index. Now we're going to use the first three periods to initiate our data. That is, um, I'm going to just take the average of the first three periods of demand and I'm going to use this average right here that comes out to 121 to estimate the seasonality index. I'm going to divide the demand in period 1 by our average over the 3 periods. I'm going to hit a 4 to fix that cell so I can copy the formula down and it will just move in the demand column and it will divide it all by the same value of the average. Um, demand for the first three periods. So that created a uh, an initial seasonality index, 0 0.97, 0 0.77, and 1.26. The nice thing about these three, if you average these three values, they should average out to one. That's kind of what we want. Now, next we should start with some kind of a level estimate and just for lack of a better option I'm going to use 121 which is an average of the first three periods as our level estimate and our trend estimate I'm just gonna guess maybe it's two that's good enough for now now we have to apply three different formulas to get estimates for A level, and B trend, and C the seasonality index, and then we're going to put them all together using this large formula down here into our forecast. Now we can adjust this forecast so we can um, uh, forecast out several periods. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to start off with forecasting one period, and then we can extend it to two or three periods if we want to. So, we start off with our estimates for the level. Level is equal to alpha, and I'm going to have alpha, beta, and gamma, which are our three constants for our smoothing. I'm going to have them all in separate columns, or in separate cells, so that if I want to adjust alpha, beta, and gamma later on, I can just adjust that cell and it will carry over to all of our calculations. I'm going to take alpha, I'm going to fix this cell, then multiply by demand at time t, and we're in period 4, so demand in period 4, divided by our seasonality index estimate in period t minus s. So we know that we're in period 4, and we know our season is 3 periods long, so 4 minus 3 equals 1, so I'm going to pick the seasonality index in period 1, plus 1 minus alpha. Yeah. Also fix that cell, multiplied by level at time period t minus 1, which is the 121 we just estimated, or we use the average to estimate it plus 
the trend at t minus 1, which is the 2 we just guessed in this case. Later on, as we copy these formulas down, they will um, be based on the prior calculations and prior periods in time. This is all we need to do to calculate level. Trend is calculated by taking our coefficient beta times level at period 4 minus level at period 3 plus 1 minus beta multiplied with the prior trend estimate. So the trend estimate at T3. That remains 2. Um, next, we're going to calculate the update of the seasonality index. That's calculated by taking our coefficient gamma times demand period T I want to have some parentheses divided by level at period T plus 1 minus gamma multiplied by estimate for seasonality at t minus s. t equals 4 in this case. s is 3, so we take uh, our first seasonality index estimate. Okay. So now what we can do is we can put together our forecast. Now our forecast at time t plus m it depends on this coefficient m. m is how many periods ahead we forecast. Now in this case, we're going to keep m equal to 1. So our forecast is, in this case, level at time t. We have to go back one, one period. Level at time 3 plus 1 times the trend, close parenthesis, multiplied with the seasonality, in, seasonality index at t plus m minus s. t in this case is 3 plus m, which is 1, so t plus m is 4, minus s, s is 3, so in this case we pick the seasonality index in period 1. I forget to open the parentheses right here. That's our forecast. Now these first three forecasts we created, really it's our first attempt at uh, updating the seasonality index. The trend has already been updated because that goes from one period to another, but we have to go through one full season to update the seasonality index. Next, we can copy everything down. And this basically created our forecast. I'm going to re-highlight these cells in different colors. We know these things right here are our different pieces that we need to create to, uh, to um, calculate our forecast. And then right here is our different forecast that we have created. Now we do see by looking at the graph that our forecast does follow this seasonality of three periods. It matches the, uh, the demand quite well. I mean, follows it in, in general trends. However, um, we can still improve on this forecast by adjusting alpha, beta, and gamma. And in this case, the best way to adjust these is to use solver. 
I'm going to show you real quick how to use Solver. Now, Solver asks you to set an objective, and in this case, my objective is the U statistic. You can pick any other one uh, that you wish. We want to minimize the U statistic by changing the variable cells R2 through R4. So the, uh, these are alpha, beta, and gamma. Subject to the constraints that each one of these is not smaller than zero and it's not larger than one. So I'm going to use the evolutionary solving method. And all I need to do now is to hit solve. And then it will calculate different values for alpha, beta, and gamma. And it will pick the ones that give us a minimal value for our use statistic, which makes our forecast more accurate. And uh, really that's all there is to applying the whole winter technique for exponential smoothing. And we can see already down here that it minimized the use statistic from 0.58 to 0 0.50. And it's still searching for better values right now. I also highlighted these cells right here that uh, calculate our different error measurements in different colors. I use conditional formatting. Depending on how large they are, they show different shades of between white and red. Okay, so Solver has found a solution and uh, cannot improve the current solution and all constraints are satisfied. It found a minimum. I'm going to go ahead and accept these. And it gives me an alpha value of 0.07, a beta value of 0.26, and a gamma value of 0.46. So this is uh, applying Holt-Winters technique for exponential smoothing for seasonal and trended data.